that's not what we have talked about yet here. That's what we're going to talk about today. What? That's right. That's right. So, I, didn't, I forgot about that part. I never heard of that. Yeah, well, I said it. I said that's where you heard it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Peter, Peter, yeah, he pulled the sword out and he, and, he, and he cut the guy's ear off and Jesus took his ear and put it back on him. Okay, so P Peter, and then, and Jesus said, Peter, don't put your sword away. He said, put your sword away. This isn't the time for, for swords. And um, Jesus let himself be taken by all those soldiers that were with Judas Judas is disciple that betrayed him. I'm going to keep talking here. So Judas led all those soldiers to him, and, and Jesus, I'm sure, what, is, what do they, what, if, if somebody comes to get somebody they think is a criminal, what do they do? They, 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 they tie their hands up, right? Or today we have like handcuffs or something, but I'm sure they had them tied up really tight, and they started taking Jesus back into the city, and all of the disciples, the Bible says they all left him. I can imagine that they maybe even were running. Looking around, they didn't want any of those soldiers, that big gang of soldiers that came to get Jesus to see them, and they were just they were just getting out of there. And it just seems like probably Peter in his mind, he's running, he's scared, he he thought he did the right thing, and Jesus said, No, that's not the right thing, and 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 then he says, he's getting away, but in his mind, he remembers that earlier that night, he had promised Jesus that he would stay with him wherever he was. I don't know if you remember me telling you about that, but Peter, Jesus said, Peter, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, oh no, maybe everybody else, but I'm sticking with you. And now what's he doing? He's going the other way. And in his mind, he's got to be thinking, I said I was going to stay with him. So, he thought, well, i got to find out what's going on. This is just really strange. But, he probably thought, but I don't want to be right. i, I got to figure out what's going on. And actually, another one of Jesus' disciples also kind of thought the same thing. So, they, they went along, and they stayed far enough away so they wouldn't get caught. But close enough so they could see what was going on. They, and of course, it was nighttime, and they probably, the soldiers had their like, torches and stuff like that, because we didn't have flashlights back then. So they're going along, and these two disciples, finally they see that this, the, the, all the soldiers took Jesus, tied up, and they brought him in to the high priest's house, or, uh, to the chief priest's house. And it's pretty much like there's this big courtyard, a big open area, and on one side was a very important priest's house, and on the other side was the high priest's house. And they took him, and the very important priest was the high priest's dad. That is his father-in-law. So first they took Jesus into this big courtyard, and and it was in it, this a big place. So they had like a gate out front, maybe a wall with a door there. And um, those disciples, they saw that they took Jesus into that place. Well, one of, the, one of the, there was two disciples. One of them was Peter. The other one, he knew people in that house. So he went, and when he came to the door, people let him in because they knew him. I don't, we don't know exactly how that worked out, but he knew him. And then he started looking around and thought, Peter's not here. So this other disciple, he went to the girl that was at the door letting people in and out because it was nighttime. You don't just leave the doors open, right? So he went to the door and he saw that Peter was outside and he told the girl who held the door and said, hey, let that guy come in. So the girl let Peter in. And so now this other disciple and Peter are kind of in the same area. They're not right next to Jesus. But they're in the same area where Jesus is. And Peter is there. And it's kind of a early spring day. You know how it is in the spring? It's kind of nice during the day, but at night it's cold. And so
So this was nighttime, and they had built a fire in the open courtyard. And all the people that weren't really involved with what was going on in the house, they were outside, and some of them were gathered around the fire there. And Peter got cold, so he went around by the fire. And after a little while, the girl that had let him in came up to him and said, you're one of his disciples, aren't you? And what do you think Peter did? He said, No, I, I'm not. I'm not one of his disciples. I, I don't know what you're talking about. What was that? That was a lie. Lies. Yeah, and that was denying. He didn't know who that was, but didn't he? But he was like, he was scared or something. He thought, I'm I'm not, I'm not, if I, if I say, he probably thought, if I say that I know him, they're going to drag me in there with him. They're going to tie my hands around him, and whatever's going to happen to him is going to happen to me. And I mean, he was scared. He said, I'm not, he said, no, I don't know, I don't know him. Well, you know what happened not long after he said that? I don't know why, because it seems to me it was still pretty late at night. But not long after that. Well, a little while later. So, while that's going on out in the courtyard, Jesus is inside, and that real important priest is standing there and accusing him. That they're trying to find all kinds of things. They're finding as many people to say whatever they would want bad about Jesus. Because, as much as they hated Jesus, they wanted to act like they were doing what's right. And in order to judge Jesus, in order to punish Jesus, that he had to be accused at least of doing something wrong. And in that, in the Jews had a law that two people, you couldn't, one person couldn't accuse somebody of doing something wrong, and then that person gets punished just with one person. That's a pretty good law, isn't it? And what if I got really angry at somebody and I said, he did something and I lied about him. And then that person was punished just because of what I said. So the law said at least two people have to have to have to accuse a person of doing something wrong, and what they say has to be exactly the same. So the the priests they were trying to find anybody that thought bad could say something bad about Jesus. They found one, and he said one thing, and another one, and he said another thing, and another thing, and another thing, and they couldn't find anybody. Nobody ever had the same story. Now, why do you think nobody had the same story? Why did nobody have the same story? McKenna? Because they didn't remember it. No. Because they, because they lied. Because they were lying. Now, we've all lied before. We don't lie. It's not good that we've lied before. But if you and a friend ever lied together about the same story, you know how the teacher can... I, I heard a story once. Four guys were going to, they, they could drive. They were old enough to drive, and they got to school. And they were, they, they got to school, and they had skipped the day before. And they said something like, teacher, we, we, we couldn't come to school yesterday because we had a flat tire in the car. And the teacher said, oh, okay, that's fine. And he put them all in different parts of the room, and he said, tell me which tire was flat. What do you think? They didn't know how to answer the question, did they? Why? Because they were lying. And these people that were accusing Jesus, none of them had the same story because they were lying. Had Jesus ever done anything wrong? No. No, Jesus never did anything wrong. So anybody that accused Jesus of doing something wrong is lying. So, Jesus, they were asking them questions and lying about him and all kinds of stuff. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and Jesus said, you know, why are you asking me all these questions? I've been in the temple all the time. I've taught for years. You can you, you ask my disciples what I've taught. Ask, just come and listen to what I've taught. And they're trying to get him to, they're trying to trick him into saying something that they thought was wrong. And they would never be able to do that, would they? Well, meanwhile, so Jesus is in there, and Jesus is, is he denying anything? No. And Peter, he's already said, no, I, I don't know him. 
Well, a little while he went, uh, he got away from the fire, and it seems like he went out, and maybe there was like a balcony or something. You know how there's a rail, and he's looking out, just kind of trying to see what might be happening or whatever. And while he was standing there, another lady came up to him. I don't know what they were doing. And she said, what did she say? You're one of his disciples, aren't you? And what do you think he said? No. No, he already lied once, right? And so now he denied him again. Once you do, once you lie once, it's a lot easier to lie the second time, right? To never lie. We all have lied, but it's it's lying is a really really bad sin. You should not lie. Because once we lie, then we have to tell another lie to cover up that lie, and another lie to cover up that lie. And so Peter is standing there, and the lady said, "You." You're one of his disciples. He said, no, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know that guy. I don't know him. And not long after that, a man standing there said, ah, you talk like a Galilean. You have to be one of his disciples. The way you talk, just, you're not from around here. You're one of his disciples. That's the only reason you would be here is because you're one of his disciples. And Peter, when he heard that, he got angry. And he cursed. He had been a he'd been a fisherman before. And he, he cursed and he swore and he said, I don't know that man. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's just kind of, it's not a coincidence that right after Peter had done that, Jesus was being taken from the one house to the other house. Jesus was walking through the courtyard right when Peter was yelling and cursing. And you think Jesus heard what Peter was saying? Yeah. He did. He heard what he was saying. The Bible says Jesus looked at Peter, and the only thing I, I think the way it is, Jesus looked at Peter. What what would you look what would you your look at Peter be like if, if he was saying that about you? Huh? Jesus looked at him in the Bible. We get the idea that Jesus looked at him with sadness because he was he, he, felt, he, he was sad for Peter because Peter was doing wrong. But he also looked at him with love. Somehow, Jesus showed Peter when he looked at him that he still loved him. Only Jesus can do that. Right? Jesus loves people that are sinners. Jesus loves people that sinned right against him. Right then, when Peter is saying, I don't know him, and cursing and swearing, Jesus looks at him, and Peter saw that look, and I don't know exactly everything that Peter thought, but the Bible says he left. He was probably embarrassed. He was probably, probably felt terrible that he had not, just earlier that same night, he had said what? I would die to you. I ne I'll never deny you. And now, he had denied him three times. And guess what happened right after the third time that he denied him? The rooster crowed. The rooster crowed, and he heard that, and he saw Jesus. And the Bible says he went out, we don't know where, but he went out and he wept bitterly. Now, I don't know if you know what those words are, but that means he cried really bad. He cried really hard. He went somewhere and he was just so ashamed of himself. And he was, and he was I, I can't even think of all the different emotions, all the different feelings that he must have had. But the Bible says he went out and he cried. And he cried so hard. He cried bitterly. And Jesus, he went off to the other side. And you know what they asked him? Now, the, the Jews had a law. That, you, that if you accuse somebody of something, you could not make him accuse himself. Okay? Other people could accuse him, but you couldn't say, you couldn't make somebody say something and then be punished for something they said about himself. We have the same law here in America. It's called the Fifth Amendment. So we have the same law. Well, the, the, the high priest he kept asking. They couldn't find anybody. Finally, the high priest said to Jesus, Listen, you tell me. Tell me whether or not you are 
the Son of God. Now, if somebody said, if, if, if I came up here and I said, I am the Son of God, I am the Messiah, you would think I was loony, wouldn't you? Okay? If I really believed it and I wasn't loony, I would be blaspheming, wouldn't I? I would be saying, I am God. Am I God? Nobody's God. No man is God. And so the chief priest was saying to Jesus, he said, tell us whether you're the Son of God. Tell us whether you're God. Now, if any man says they're God, that's blasphemy. And if somebody blasphemes God, the Jews' law was that they should be killed. So Jesus knew. Jesus knew that if he said yes, they were going to kill him. But was Jesus God? You think Jesus denied that he was God? No. Peter denied that he knew Jesus. You think Jesus denied just to just to be safe, so they wouldn't kill him? No, Jesus was brave, wasn't he? Jesus had courage. He always told the truth, and so when the high priest, even though the high priest wasn't really allowed to ask him that question, Jesus, he said, "I am." And as soon as he said that, the high priest said, we don't need any other witnesses. We don't need anybody to come in here and say anything about him. He, we've all heard it with our own ears from his own mouth. He's claimed to be God. That's blasphemy. He's worthy of death. And then, right then, everybody in the room, they just, some of them came up to him and they just smacked him across the face. Some of them took their fists and they punched him in the face. Because this man, they thought this man was claiming to be God. And they hated him. We could talk for a long time about all the different reasons that they hated him. But that's just the beginning. They tied him up in the garden. They grabbed him in there. And then when he, when they finally said, I am God. Now, was that a lie? No. no. Because he is God. But when he finally said, I am God. Or they asked him if he was God. And he said, I am. They began to beat him. And to punch him. And to hit him. And, pretty, and next week we're going to see that they're going to take him to a bunch of different places in front of other rulers with, that had other soldiers. And they just treated them very badly for a long time. And then finally, what is going to happen to it? He gets killed. He's executed. Crucified. That's right. So we want to, we want to love Jesus. We want to thank Jesus. Because he could have. He could have said, no, I'm not doing this. And if Jesus had not gone through with that, every single one of us would not, would perish. And we there would be no chance of ever having everlasting life. But Jesus went through. Jesus was brave and courageous. And he didn't lie. And he did, he did what was right. So we should be thankful to Jesus. And we should tell him how thankful we are, how much we love him for doing that. But another thing we should remember, because all of us do bad things once in a while, and maybe we haven't said, I don't know Jesus, but we've done bad things. Do you think Jesus is happy with us? No. No. It makes him sad when we do bad things. But does Jesus stop loving us if we do bad things? No. No. So, just like Peter, when we do something bad, it should make us sad. And we'll see later on that Peter came back to Jesus, and that's what we need to do. If we do, we, When we know that we've done something wrong, we should know it makes Jesus sad. But we should also know that Jesus loves us and wants us to do what's right and wants us to come back to him and, and do 